What do you want Nigerians to, you know, come to do in Gambia? What and what do you have? Well, we have a lot to 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 offer to to Nigerians because, um, you know, um, we have talked about it several times that the sub-regional market is key to our success stories because we have been dependent too much on the two operators from from Europe, and uh, Nigeria being the biggest economy in Africa, uh, you know, has a big role to play in terms of our success stories uh, for tourism. We are here to sell the Gambia because we have a lot of things that the Nigerians would love in any country, whether in terms of leisure, in terms of conferencing, in terms of um, um, romantic holiday making, in terms of um, wedding, in terms of shopping, uh, in terms of even having a lazy cruise on the beautiful the Gambia you had. And of course, we have some investment opportunities in Gambia, and I think it, it is very clear that Nigerians are big spenders, and you know they're actually big boys. And uh, mm. in the continent of Africa, what a Nigerian would spend coming to the Gambia would be three or four times more than what a European would spend coming to the Gambia as a tourist. So um, that is the reason why we said we cannot lose the opportunity we have to knock on the Nigerian doors. And the good thing is there are so many bilaterals between the two countries, and we have to nurture that. And it's only tourism that could do that. So we believe that we have to come. We also need to have our own share because they are our brothers. Uh, coming to the Gambia from Nigeria, you don't need a visa. We have also seen that Nigerians love conferencing. And as we speak now, we're building one of the most sophisticated conference centers in Africa. Uh, you are building on yeah. you already have. Uh, it's almost ready. It's almost ready. I can tell you if it's ready, it's going to be one of the best we have in Africa. And that means that we are ready for the Nigerian market in terms of whatever they are looking for. for it. Another country, yes, the Gambia is 1.8 million people. We have a lot that we can offer in terms of tourism. Which area can one invest in the Gambia? For us, as tourism personnel, we, we of course, we promote tourism as as the main uh, catch. But of course, when we travel, we we promote the Gambia in totality. Uh, there are so many investment opportunities in the Gambia, and I can give an example. For instance, if if a Nigerian happens to come to Gambia and you want to invest in a four-star, five-star hotel, it, there is, uh, there is um, the option of giving you a five years uh, holiday break in terms of taxation. If you're actually building a product within the greater budget area, within the TDA1, if you are going through the hinterland, you might have eight years tax holiday break. And of course, on top of that, you'll be given, uh, you can apply and get the SI. Um, the uh, Special Investment Certificate, SIC, uh, which is normally uh, um, in coordination with um, GAIPA. Uh, you know, what that does is, you know, if you are actually bringing the, the equipment that you need to do to, to construct, um, for example, in a hotel, mm -hmm. you know, you're actually you know, giving a waiver when, okay. when upon arrival, you know, uh, at the, at the Gambian port. So my appeal to potential investors from Nigeria is the doors are open. Now the country is a democratic country. Um, investors are more confident within the atmosphere that we have actually um, found ourselves into. And of course, a big thank you to the Nigerian government and to all Nigerian people, because uh, when 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 we were in the when we were in that situation, Nigeria was in the forefront to make sure that you know we we realize uh, the democracy that we have been calling for, and that is why now investment opportunities, security, um, and even confidence of investors have gone very high. That is why if you go to the Gambia now, you see so many four or five star hotels that have been built and, uh, and it's along the coast. And even in terms of ecotourism, it's actually growing very fast. Okay. So, so we are really in lead in terms of sustainable tourism. If you go to the interland now, we are encouraging a lot of eco camps because what we have realized is well, you know, if you want to be an experience in a country as a tourist, you don't just need to limit yourself within a certain locality. You, well, what we want is a, um, a good deal of an excursion where when you come to the Gambia from the airport, you go and visit the Greater Banjo area, and you go to the hinterland, experience the river cruise we have. 
uh, we also have some fantastic experience in terms of some of the animals that we have, like the Kachikali, you know, the likes of the Kachikali, yeah, the Kachikali, where, where you can crocodile pool, where you can, yeah, where you can touch a crocodile and you get the bitten. The crocodile so. that, uh, that the crocodile that uh, gives children. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> so all, all those things are, 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 are things are part of our culture, and of course, if you want to go to experience about the the, the slave trade, of course, you can miss out by. You know, Kunta talking about Kunta Kinte, Kinte is actually came from us. It's a Gambian, and uh, this is there for everybody to see. And uh, the friendly atmosphere, like like I always say, that's the reason why we see this my coast. So, you know, I'm sure you <laughs> you must see the the beautiful smiles from my sister here. Yeah. And we always uh, we like to smile to 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 show the people how hospitable we are. And uh, yeah, that's that's what the Gambia is all about. That's what the Gambia is all about. Uh, come and enjoy the Gambia. Come to Ida Cham, enjoy the, you know, and, and Ida cook varieties of food, and we know that Nigerians love food, and yeah. that's why she's right here with Everybody us. Everybody travelers love food. Yeah, but, but you know. Yeah, but trust me, Nigerians love their food, and I, I and I actually respect that. that. Mm -hmm. well, I always I respect that. that. Yes, I always. Everybody you love food. You know, I always say that you know things like travelers yeah. all over the world yeah. have in common yeah. is food and drink. Yeah. True. That's what travelers all over the world have in common. Uh, so I we agree. always want to go to a destination, experience their cuisine. Yeah. You know, guys will always want to drink. People always experience the local brew. The nightlife. And, and, and yeah. nightlife so, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And then that I know that Gambian have in abundance. Yeah. Thomas Cook just folded up. Yeah. There are huge path of growth of Gambian tourism. So how will that now affect the tourism market in the Gambia? In all fairness, of course, uh, you know, we were all certain by the, the news. Um, and, and it is very clear that, of course, they contribute almost 50% of our arrivals. We have to think outside the box because uh, uh, if you depend too much on two operators, of course, when they pull out, this is what happened. Um, it is a big loss for the Gambia, but I think uh, we still have a chance of closing that gap. And I think having EAPs and the likes of ASCA and even any potential businessman who interested to penetrate the Gambian market in our aviation field, you're most welcome. I think uh, we have seen over the years where um, uh, there was a collaboration where Freetown was having a carrier that they would come to Banjul and fly to London. There was a time they even used the traffic rights of GIA because we, GIA gametons that have a traffic light, they can fly direct to from Banjul to London. The same applies flying, flying direct to the United States. And uh, I remember yesterday I was having a meeting with, RP, where, with ARPs and I, with the marketing manager, and I told her that um, there is no harm in. Uh, thinking about it, that uh, because you know at this moment Gambia don't have a national carrier to be able to be a feeder in terms of situations like this. A uh, flag carrier, uh, you know, at times there's this bottleneck with government. No, no, I totally agree, and that's why I told you, peace. There is no harm in coming to the Gambia, expressing the interest, because you can even do Lagos, um, maybe Accra, Lagos, Accra, Banjo, London. Or Lagos, Banjul, Banjul, London, because so we we have so many Gambians and non Gambians coming from the UK because that's our biggest source market. So the market is definitely there. That's what I can tell you. It is a big loss, but, but like I said, sometimes well in life, if anything there is a loss, there is always an opportunity that will come. That's why we're here in Nigeria. We believe that if we have the Nigerians, uh, our West African brothers and sisters, penetrate in the same way that the Europeans are in the Gambia, we wouldn't have a problem. And that is why we want Nigerians to, to penetrate the Gambia. We have an open arms with them because we know, we have seen how they have contributed immensely to the likes of Dubai. I mean, you know, we have seen it. Dubai have taken almost the top side of the Aquaba trade fair. Yeah. They didn't just do that because of they just want to come. But because Nigeria is, is instrumental in their success stories. And if Dubai can do that to allow Nigerians to paint it, we are next door to, to Nigeria. We want them to do the same way or even beyond what they are doing for Dubai. I wish you people all the best. 
that means it's marketing and more marketing and more marketing. I mean, you have to, you know, push it and keep marketing. I know Nigerians love Gambia, but I know it's slowed down a little bit, maybe because you guys also slow down thinking that, oh, we don't catch them. I know. No, we, 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 we never <laughs> thought that. I, I, th I think what happened is, uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that we were aggressive because there was a World Bank support that was complementing, like you said, marketing expensive. And if you want to be aggressive, you have to get the funds. So when the World Bank uh, um, support uh, um, expired, of course, it was the former regime. So the World Bank were comfortable helping the former government. And now we have a new dispensation. So we're pushing the World Bank to actually support us. Because it's not that expensive. When you have the muscles, we go all the way. Okay. And that's why the likes of Ghana and Senegal have uh, millions of dollars being, being given to them by the World Bank. And right now, whatever we are spending now is from our own coffers. Mm -hmm. and marketing expensive mm -hmm. you okay. need support and when we get the support trust me we will be taking people like you to Gambia every week anyway oh well that's really nice